Okay, so without using a calculator, can you answer this question right here? And of course, the question is, uh, what is the square root of negative 121? Okay, so if you have your answer ready, go ahead and put that into the comment section. I'm going to show you the correct answer in just one second, and then of course, I'm going to fully explain this because many of you won't know how to answer this question. It may be very confusing, but uh, you won't be confused for long because if you don't understand what's going on here, well, this is an excellent opportunity to learn something critically important in mathematics. And of course, I'll get to all this in just one second. But first, let me quickly introduce myself. My name is John, and I have been teaching middle and high school math for decades. And it really is my true passion to try to make learning mathematics as easy as possible. So if you need assistance in math, check out my math help program at tcmathacademy.com. You can find a link to that in the description below. And if this video helps you out, or if you just enjoy this content, make sure to hit that like and subscribe button, as that definitely uh, helps me out. Okay, so uh, the square root of negative 121, uh, the answer is not negative 11. So if you put down negative 11, that, that might make some sense, okay? Because you say, well, it's a negative number. Maybe it's uh, negative 11 because the square root of 121 is 11. But this is not right. The actual answer is the following, okay? 11i, all right? 11i. Now, if you don't know what this I means, well, don't worry. I'm going to explain this uh, completely in just one second. But if you got this right, we must celebrate by giving you a nice little happy face and A plus a 100% and multiple stars. So you can brag to your friends and family that indeed you are a professional certified expert in the area of complex numbers. Okay. What we're talking about here is complex and imaginary numbers. And if you're like complex numbers, uh, I have no idea what this is. Well, now is the time to learn because this is uh, really important stuff in mathematics. And uh, some of you may not actually have uh, gotten to the level of math to learn about complex numbers. And don't let this uh, word complex uh, scare you. Complex numbers are not that complicated. And I'm going to go ahead and explain all this right now. Okay, so let's take a look at this question again. So we have the square root of negative 121. Now, it's a good idea for us to first take a look at this question, right? Which is, what's the square root of 121? Now, I did say uh, do not use your calculator. So what you're looking for is two numbers such that you multiply them together, you get back to uh, 121. Now, of course, 10 times 10 is 100. So if you're like playing around with the numbers, you're like, well, it's got to be bigger than 10. Maybe they may, uh, let me try 11 because I know this um, YouTube math man, he wouldn't give me an overly difficult problem to figure out without the aid of a calculator. And you would be correct. Okay. So the square root of 121 is 11. Now I'm going to make a technical point here. And uh, some of you are going to be saying, well, I never heard of this before. And this is really important because a lot of you might say, well, isn't the square root of 121 equal to positive and negative 11? Well, this is a very confused point in math, and I'm going to go ahead and clarify this right now. So when you're asked to just find the square root of a number, okay, uh, typically what you're going to want to put down is uh, the principal square root. Okay, the principal uh, square root, <clears throat> excuse me, um, and uh, this word is really not, uh, it's, well, it's in math textbooks, but it's really not uh, taught as, um, you know, I'd say as often as you think it, or this point isn't emphasized enough, but uh, I'm going to make this point right now. Okay, so the square root of 121 is going to be equal to 11, right? So you're going to want to put down just the positive version of that, uh, which again is the principal square root. So some of you might be saying, well, negative 11 works as well because let's go ahead and take a look at this here real quick. Uh, 11 times 11 is 121. That's correct. And negative 11 times negative 11 is also positive 121. So again, when we're finding the square root, we're looking for a number such that you multiply it by itself. You get back to that number. So why wouldn't negative 11 be a uh, answer to this question? Well, again, uh, when you're just asked, um, asked, in a question or you know a quiz exam what's the square root of a number just put the positive version down so when do we use this negative version well let's suppose i had this equation right here x squared is equal to 121. 
Now this is a quadratic equation, okay? And that means that this thing will have two answers. So to solve for x, I would take the square root of both sides. So x squared is equal to 121. So again, I'm gonna solve for x. So the square root of x squared is x. Now in this situation, when you're trying to find the solution to like an equation, like a quadratic equation, this is where you want to answer both positive and negative 11, because this equation does have two solutions, okay? And those roots or solutions or zeros, there's all kinds of names for uh, the solutions to equations. It's going to be a positive and negative uh, version of that answer, okay? So that's where you want to use the both positive and negative, but just a, a quick distinction because a lot of people uh, do get this confused. All right, so, uh, but here clearly, if we say, well, you know, the square root of negative uh, 121, I know the square root of, 121 is 11, so maybe because this is negative, this is negative 11. Well, you can see here that that is not the case because negative 11 times negative 11 is 121. So what could the answer be? Okay, if it's not positive 11 or negative 11, then what's going on? What do we need to uh, do? Well, we're going to have to expand our number system, and I'm going to show you what I'm talking about in just one second. But first, I'm going to ask you to consider subscribing to my channel. This really does help me out individually, but my objective is to help other people. So really what you're doing by subscribing is helping uh, this YouTube algorithm reach more people like yourself that might be interested in math or need help in mathematics. And if you're gonna do that, make sure to hit that uh, bell notification. And by the way, if you're new to my YouTube channel, I have about 2,000 plus videos from basic math to advanced math, not calculus, and everything in between. So please take advantage of all this content. I made it for you. All right, so let's get back to this now. So the answer to this question, the square root of negative uh, 121, is not on this real number line, okay? So we went over here. So one, we have, of course, our, uh, the real number system. So here's zero, one, two, three, and of course this goes all the way to positive infinity, and this direction goes all the way to negative infinity. So over here, someplace, is uh, positive 11. Okay, that's not gonna work. And then over here is negative 11. That's not gonna work as well. So where is the answer, okay? Or maybe there is no answer to this question. Well, in fact, there is, because I told you the answer is 11i. So if the answer to this question is not on the real number line, well, where is it? Well, it's in a completely different number system, okay? So now let's go ahead and talk about the complex number system. All right, so, uh, when we learn mathematics, when you first start off in like elementary school and basic math, we start learning like one, two, you know, basic uh, natural numbers, counting numbers, all these type of numbers here, like fractions and, and whatnot, decimals, positive and negative numbers, etc. All these numbers are part of the real number system. Okay, but when we get into situations like the square root of negative 121, we're going to have to expand our number system into the complex number system. And when you get into, um, again, a little bit more advanced math, typically first year algebra, this is kind of introduced, uh, certainly like your second year algebra courses or like college algebra, certainly pre-calculus, you work a lot with complex numbers. So uh, for some of you out there that are planning, or maybe you're in that uh, level of mathematics right now, you should understand uh, that the complex number system is, uh, well, the real number system is a subset of the complex number system. So what is a complex number? Well, let's gonna take a look at the form right here. So a basic complex number has two components. It's in the form of A plus BI. So this is a, a, the real component and an imaginary component, component. So for example, two plus uh, five I would be a complex number. This two is the real component, real number component to a complex number. And then this I part right here is the imaginary component. The entire thing is a complex number, All right? So that's basically what a complex number looks like. So let's go ahead and uh, really kind of understand what this I business is all about. And this is really the key to unlocking uh, this problem here, figuring this thing out. Okay, so I is just an imaginary part. And by definition, I is equal to the square root of negative one. Okay, so if you can remember this, then you'll be okay with complex number. Just remember I, an imaginary part, is equal to the square root of negative one. Now, how does this help us out? Well, this is really a tre uh, tremendously 
you know, uh, beneficial for us because here's what we can do. So we have the square root of negative 121. So we got to remember that, like, a, for example, the square root of 8, we could break up a square root into a, uh, a square root of a number into its factors. So, for example, I could write the square root of 8. Let me kind of write this a little bit better over here. The square root of 8. And this is stuff hopefully you already know. But I could break this up into uh, factors, right? So 8 I could think of as 4 times 2. And now the benefit of doing that is I could split these square roots just like this. Okay, I can actually take the square root of the individual factors. And, of course, the square root of 4 is going to be 2 square root of 2. Okay, so I want to keep that in mind. So the square root of negative 121, I'm going to, I'm going to basically think of it this way. The square root of positive, 20, uh, positive 121 times negative 1. Okay, so I'm basically going to get rid of this negative in front of the 121, and I'm going to kind of isolate it over here as a negative 1. Now, that's going to really help us out because now I can split uh, this one big square root over these factors into two individual square roots. So this is going to be equal to the square root of a positive 121, which, of course, we know the answer to, times the square root of negative 1. All right, so hopefully you can see that this is now going to be very easy to uh, solve. So the uh, square root of positive, of positive 121, of course, it's, we're just thinking about the principal square root. This is going to be 11. And then the square root of negative 1, by definition, is i. So we're just going to put, a, uh, put an i right there. And there you go, 11i. Now, if you did put uh, positive negative 11i, that's perfectly fine. I would accept that as well. But uh, I just wanted to kind of, you know, make that distinction about the principal square root. But uh, anyways, this is an example of working with complex and imaginary numbers. This is extremely important uh, in mathematics. And again, don't let this word complex numbers, you know, or, you know, don't let the, the description or topic, you know, um, you know, of things in math scare you. Okay. Sometimes it's, it's really just foreign to you. In other words, if you never heard of it before, it's going to sound, you know, scary, complex, imaginary numbers or whatnot. You know, uh, what you need, you know, to really learn this stuff is great instruction. And that's what I try to deliver. Now, if you are studying algebra and you need to understand complex numbers better, uh, let me give you a couple suggestions. One, I have a ton of additional videos on my YouTube channel about complex and imaginary numbers, and there is much, much more that you need to know. But if you really need to uh, kind of get some full instruction on this, check out my Algebra 2 course uh, or my pre-calculus course. You'll find links to those in the description below. All right, so with all that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your mathematics adventures. Thank you for your time, and have a great day.